you know, let your emotion lead you through the story and that's how you will really enjoy it. Hi again! So here's another book I want to talk to you about and it's called The High Mountains of Portugal by Jan Martel. It was published in, hold on, let me just check, 2017, I think. No, 2016. It was published in 2016. And Jan Martel, if you're not familiar, is the author of Life of Pi. So I loved Life of Pi. So of course, I had to, you know, at some point I knew I'm going to come back to, to this author and I picked this. Um, so just a short synopsis of the book. This is such a unique book, I have to say. It's such a, it's such an unconventional, unique, um, unconventional book. It's just, it's strange even, honestly. But I guess that's to be expected with Jan Martel. Even with Life of Pi, um, you know, he has this certain style of conveying a message in a story uh, through through strangeness and almost mystical slash fantasy way. Okay, maybe not fantasy, but definitely mystical way. All right. So as a synopsis, it's a three-part story, or it's a it's a book of three stories that's kind of connected in some way. The common denominator of the three stories is the title itself, The High Mountains of Portugal. The first act uh, or the first story is about a man who is obsessed about finding this treasure at the high mountains of Portugal because he read it in some ancient diary of a priest. And he is, you know, he, he, he's in this, he's also in grief, I have to say. He's, he's grieving about the loss of his lover, his son, and his father all in the same week. For all intents and purposes, the man is okay. He's kind of, you know, he's normal. He's, He's living his life the way the, the way he would normally um, do, you know, going to work and all that. But I think secretly he is still in deep grief. And the quest for that treasure at the high mountains of Portugal is his way of overcoming that grief. And he didn't realize it until that point where he reached uh, the high mountains of Portugal and until he was there. That's when he kind of completely acknowledged that, yeah, I am, I am, I need help or something to that effect. Um, so it's <laughs> Act 1 is strange. The man is strange. In one example of his strangeness that you would see all throughout the three acts or the three stories in the book is that this man walks backward, like he walks literally backward for whatever reason. He just felt like it made sense to him um, after the loss of all his love in his life, his lover, his son, and his father. After losing the three of them, um, he decided that there is no point in walking straight or there is no point in, in walking, in attacking life head on and at face value. He thought it made more sense to just walk backwards because that way you kind of protect yourself, you kind of protect your, your, your face in the front of your body, which is more important than at the back, apparently. So that's his interpretation of his grief. That's one of his ways to, to overcome his grief, which I thought was really strange. And But at the same time, if it made sense to him, then it's okay. And that's one of the points of the book, that we grieve, each of us, we grieve differently. And we cope with our grief differently. And in this case, this man copes with walking literally backwards. And that's fine. That's how he does it. He finds comfort in it. And that's fine. And that's just one example of the strangeness of the things that Jan Martel um, conveys, right? He... He gives he he shares his ideas in the most most unconventional, unique ways that at face value does not make sense. But then if you you know if you dig a little deeper, you kind of see it and understand it. The second part of the book or the second story is even stranger. It's about a pathologist who um, is late. It just happened in one night, by the way. The second story. It's about a pathologist who is at work late at night and he was visited by a strange woman trying. Um, asking him to do an autopsy of her dead husband whom she brought literally in a luggage. Um, so that again is strange, right? I mean, yun palang, you know that it's, it's weird. Um, but again, the thing that's not, um, not obviously said in the act two or the second story is that this pathologist is actually also in grief and he's also trying to, to overcome that grief. 
um, and trying to find um, trying to find meaning uh, of of it all. Right at some point, there was a conversation with his wife, and his wife is sharing him stories about Jesus Christ and. His wife was comparing Jesus Christ to Agatha Christie novels and how they're similar and how they have the same format of storytelling and so on. I can't, you know, I would not do justice um, if I tell it to you now, but seriously, it almost sounds like it is a compelling argument um, when you read it. It's it's quite fun, unique, and totally unexpected in in all the in all the good ways, right? <clears throat> so that's the second story. The third story, or the act three in the book, which is also my favorite, is the senator from Canada who decided to leave everything behind, adopt a chimpanzee, and move to the high mountains of Portugal. And there he lived with his um, primate friend. And again, that's strange, right? But that's my favorite part of the of the book because I thought it was the most it was the most thoughtful, it was the most tender um, part of the story. And it was the most sincere. I felt like it has, strangely enough, the, the senator's story with his primate uh, friend um, in the high mo- mountains of Portugal is, is, you know, it shows more humanity and more sincerity, I felt like. Um, so uh, another thing about the senator, he's also kind of in grief because he just, I think he just divorced his wife. So he's trying to find meaning in life again. He's trying to find himself again. So... At this point, you know uh, the common denominators of the three stories and you know what it's about, right? It's The book is really about loss and grief and how one copes with that and how one finds meaning in life again, even in the most strangest things. And that's the, for me, that's, that's my key takeaway um, from the book. I felt like it was very thoughtful. It was very deep, um, but at the same time, fun and funny. Um, in in the right moments, but also also has has depth, right? With Jan Martel, and I remember with Life of Pi, um, you read his work with with your heart, you know. Even if that sounds a little cheesy, but in, his stories speak to the soul or to your heart directly. You should not take everything literally, because if you do. You will miss the point. You will miss the story. You have to open your mind and let the mysticism come in once in a while. And let your heart kind of, you know, let your emotion lead you through the story. And that's how you will really enjoy it. Um, so if you're in the mood for, for that, for a little introspection, for a little challenge, maybe. Because honestly, it is it is unconventional. At some point, you would be thinking, well, what? What? It's so weird. But... That's the point of it, and that's the beauty of it. So if you're into that, if you're if you're in the mood for that, do give it a try. Um, it has a little of a Life of Pi um, format element to it, but I think this one is, you know, this one is more <laughs> more unconventional, more challenging um, in that sense, but still truly enjoyable. So there you have it. Hope that helps. Thank you.